Three mere mortals discover their ability to create entire universes with their minds alone. Upon discovering their abilities, these three, mm, gods if you will, join forces to create the Dark and Stormy Nights, a supercharged team of creatives with the aim of helping artists and writers around the world while combating the forces of boredom and mundanity. They are the Dark and Stormy Nights. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Dark and Stormy Nights. Today we start the planning of Season 2. I think we'll technically say that this is the first episode of Season 2. But we will be mixing in a few episodes to finish off Season 1. Right, we'll still have to jump back and do like book cover episode and querying and stuff like that. Well, we're trying to keep it as close to when we're actually doing these things as possible. So as we finish, editing is, of course, we all know, a daunting task. And we are undertaking it quite slowly. We have things going on in our personal lives which are making it a little difficult to do this at a reasonable pace. So uh, we will do it as we can. We're going to edit things. We'll get things posted and everything like that. And as we reach milestones in the bookmaking process, we will come back and do them with you so that we can walk you all the way through the, the process of making a book. But today... We are starting the planning of season two, and we have brought to you three story options. Okay, so uh, because I didn't say it earlier, this is Loki. This is Tyr. And Odin. And we are your hosts on this journey. And I apologize for my voice to anybody who hasn't watched season one. I don't always sound like this. Just be thankful you don't have to see his face. But as I I was going to say, they probably haven't watched season anything. (laughs) But, but, you know. Listened, maybe. As I spent uh, nine long days and nights um, on that wind-tossed tree. Come on. (laughs) Yeah, I've been sick. So, you know, uh, my voice is going to be a little little funky in this episode. So, I would have used my marketing terminology and said sultry. But, you know. Sure, sure. We'll go with that. Um, You're now being charged 99 cents per minute to listen to this podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are the dulcimer tones of Odin. Okay. So, um, what are we starting with? Do you, what do you, what would you like to offer up as sacrifice to our audience first? Um, so, essentially, what has happened here uh, is Loki took a little preemptive poll. Uh, regarding what we should be doing. <laughs> yeah, and we had many options that we whittled down to three based on those votes. So basically, um, a lot of you wanted to see something horror because you hate me and know that I suck at horror, apparently. Um, so that's, you know, on the table there. Um, and then we also <laughs> had an option for a sequel. Um, and then uh, the third option we came up with was um, an urban fantasy. So I think that what we're going to do is take each one of these three segments of the podcast episode today and we'll, you know, go over the story circle and maybe do a little bit of, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? I Riffing, know. Uh, you know, yes. on the on the story. I was going to say tease. <laughs> a, little, uh, <laughs> a little bit of riffing to see what we come up with for, for these different options. Cool. All right. So stop reading in the mic. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I can't uh, hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to present each of our three ideas to you one at a time, and we'd like you to help us decide which we go with. Yeah. So what do you want to start with? Uh, why are you asking me? What do you want to start with? You typed all three up. Yes, I did type them up. What does that have to do with anything? Why don't you start top to bottom? <sighs> all right, so the top one that we have is um, the horror, which we actually didn't really story circle because of the concept we were thinking. Right. Okay, so this is a little, you know, it's been done. People do this. It's a series of short stories we thought of. Maybe each week we come to you with another short story, and we compile these short stories into a singular book. But. But. There's a running theme. Yeah, yeah. So we wanted to have, but. like, some sort of, you know... Uh, evil marble, a monkey paw, some sort of connecting thread. And we were thinking maybe something on the longs, the lines of some sort of trinket that one might get at a, you know. Uh, but not the trinket itself. We wanted the shop. Right. 
The shop is the actual key. Well, I wasn't and saying a, the same trinket, but a trinket from said shop or something. Right, right. So I, I kind of like the idea of every time this, this shop or the seller, be it at a physical shop or a flea market or whatever, I like the idea of the shopkeeper being the same every time. Yeah, some little old lady who seems right. sweet as pie. Right, and then we can even like change the setting completely to like a completely different time frame, and it's still the same person. You know what I'm saying? Like they're timeless. Okay, I didn't really think about it that way. I was planning on actually having a few stories that break that mold a little. Just like, because in my head, I'm like, where can we take these stories? And I was thinking, like, maybe somebody who had that curse object who lived through one of those stories just passes it on. So you could just bypass that whole shop, but if that trinket still goes on. Why do you got to be difficult? Because it's fun. No, 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 that's fine. If you're not going to bring the shop into it and, like, the trinket itself gets passed down or it's given an Oh, yeah, it's still going to have the mark on yeah, it whatever. Yeah, that, that's fine. Well. I'm just saying when the shop comes into play, the shopkeeper is always right. the same. I kind of like that. to see... Before you close the story out, having it change hands and end up back in the hands of the shopkeeper, you know, or something Okay, like so that. instead of in the beginning of the story, maybe at the end, the shopkeeper you know, picks it up and it's takes it oh away. Oh, yeah, like the person's like, this thing is nothing but bad luck, tosses it out the window, and the shopkeeper walks down the sidewalk, stops, scoops it up off the ground. Yeah, right. I like that. Yeah, something. Fun. It either comes from or goes to the shop, but that's what the shop's about, is trading in fate. Yeah, and we were talking about like it might be a stand at a flea bazaar or a shop at the medieval fair or some kind of like little town festival. Maybe you got it off of Amazon, but it's got the same maker mark of some other company. I would say Etsy, not Amazon, and then well, I would sure, use whatever. names. Uh, you know, the uh, doomshop.com or something. Or like eBay, that. but they're, either way, we're still not calling them whatever that is. I so. wouldn't even do that. I would, I would stick mostly to like a classic shop. Or a flea market like or something market like that. Thing. Or something that like your quirky Aunt May got you and sent in the mail or something like that. You know but what once I'm again, I'd like to see Aunt May have gotten it from the shop. You know right. what I'm saying? I'd kind of like to see the change of hands. Or mm. at least, at least like the, package, the package has the logo. Yeah, maybe, and the, maybe. You know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, got a tag or something. Yeah, I want to know that it came from that shop. So, and mm -hmm. we'll, of course, have to decide on the shop. and. But, yeah, so we're basically saying a bunch of stories that might take place in any age. Most of them modern, but not all. Some could be future. Some could be in the past, you know. Can, we can do, like, uh, some Lovecraftian-style stories or modern horror, you know. Uh, and really the only thread is, you know, these cursed objects. Sure, yeah. And uh, now it would be interesting to understand whether or not... I. I do we decide? Is it like, is she cursing the objects? Is she just dealing in cursed objects? I don't think that we ever tell anybody that. Are there, you know, are, are but these just like. But I love the like idea of the shopkeeper being like some sweet little old lady that you would expect to be selling, you know, cookies. Or I'm something. actually hoping that on a subconscious level, between the three of us, we slowly start actually making that story up through just <laughs> suggestion. You know, like you start getting a feel of what the shop is about, even would, though nobody knows. I would like an overarching story right. to be tied together between all the short stories, even if it's just a little detail here or there. You know, not much. Okay, then Easter if you want to do that, then we do need to story circle this. Well, I don't. I don't know. I think it could arise naturally. Well, do no, you know? I, I, I do think we need to talk about it a little bit, <laughs> but. I'm not sure that we need to discuss it now necessarily, but oh, that's no. what I was trying to figure out is, like, is this some plot by the old lady? Is the old lady a All plant? Right, well, is the old lady the devil? No. You know? Considering that these are going to be individual stories, all right, a, a collection of short horror stories. Right, every episode will probably be I do think that we need to story else. circle this, and, and I don't know what else you plan on discussing for the next, you know, 15 minutes, if that's not what it's going to be. If you want an overarching story, I think that we need to figure that out. Well, that's what, like I said, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is, 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 the, you know, is the old lady in on it? Does she even know? I think she knows. She knows is for she sure. The cause? Is she, maybe she's some kind of elemental force of the universe. Maybe she's entropy, you know, and she's causing the inevitable downfall of maybe certain things. Maybe she's fate and only certain people show yeah, up at her door. Maybe she's the last Norn. So I feel like she's giving people the just comeuppance. Yeah, okay, maybe she's karma. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like bad. giving you what you think things. you want. Yeah, all these are bad people. And then it bites you in the ass. You know, I, that's what it feels like. But I don't know. You know, maybe she's helping in her own weird way. I, I have no idea. So. But then we'd have to make sure that all of our characters are somewhat bad people. Yeah, they're people, so they the are. Story a little bit. 
it, it wouldn't take much to figure that out. You just you just take a negative trait that every character's going to have and just exaggerate it. Maybe the sweet old lady feeds on misfortune. So maybe one of our characters could be Mike DeWine and she could give him his comeuppets. Can we do that? I, I don't know that you can. Oh, damn. And if you can, I don't know that it's a good idea. Well, screw that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing uh, the South Park where Cartman um, kills that one guy, Scott Peterson's parents, and then makes chili and forces him to eat it. Oh. <laughs> and then it's like, your tears are so delicious. I'm, I'm picturing the old lady doing that. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're suffering. Mm. I mean, it's an option. So you can make her feed on suffering. <coughs> well, no, I mean, I'm I'm good with her being karma. I love karma stories. Right, but then our our main characters have to be bad guys. Well, they have to. Do you have a hard time writing bad guys? They have to have. It's just want hard to, something. It's harder for enough. me to write a bad guy and draw a reader in to where they care what happens to them. No, no. That, that, Maybe that doesn't work that way in horror. Okay, I will be the first to admit that I am terrible with horror. I have never ever written it, and I am not even remotely good right. at this. I, I, I'm just saying, it's from watching all these like Tales from the Crypt and Outer Limits and all these types of episodes that always do these kind of things. They're not villains. They're just people with one thing, just a flawed, little flawed too much, people. a little too much greed, a little too much lust, a well, little yeah, too much I mean, anything, and then they put themselves in a scenario where they throw their whole character so away. So maybe Your she is the devil, and she just enjoys the seven deadly sins. Yeah. Maybe we have a touch of sin in each one. I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, somebody treated the waiter badly, and now, you know, and now she's overcompensating, you know, by yeah. ruining their life. Well, no, the but they're still throwing it's, their own no, life no, away. No, no, you treat the waiter badly, you deserve it. <laughs> Because it's like you want to think, and she she puts it in front of you, like you really want this, don't you? And all you got to do is just turn it up to eleven. As soon as you make that choice, that's where the whole story comes from. Because you you went down that road, you know. What if her What if her items are all really expensive, and and so when people come, they like fall in love with these trinkets, and she tells them the price, and they're like, oh no, I can't do that, and then they steal it, and when they steal it. That's well, no. That I mean, that could work for one episode. I don't think I, they should I all agree. be like that. It could be one of them. Because I mean, that would make them a b- like you know not a great person. At and least. not only that, the devil but doesn't lure people into doing bad things. You do bad things, and then the devil makes you pay for it. Well, I think the lure is well, perfect. I, for I the was going to say if she's karma. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that wouldn't work for like the karma people who had gifts either. given it to them. I don't think karma would lure you. You're just a bad person, and karma gives you what you get. Hmm. I mean, temptation is a devil thing. Okay, but what's the overall thing? Is there an end goal? Is there, like, you know, like, are we trying to open the gate of hell with enough energy or something like that? You mean, you mean when she has 25 souls or yeah, something? Yeah, I don't know. Like, what is it? You know, what is the overarching theme if that's the case? Is it just to sell out of everything in the shop, you know? Oh, well, that's interesting. What if she is cursed to forever walk this earth until she gets rid of all our curios? That would be a curse to be a salesman for your eternity. Oh. No, no, but all the Trust me, I worked at Sears. It is. All her, our our <laughs> curios are her sins, and she has to, like, peddle them all away. Oh, like, so she, she was a, a, a mortal who did a lot of sins, and right, each right, of these right. represents one of her sins, and then she has to get rid of them all in order to pass on. Yeah, she's, she's not rehabilitating anybody. She's actually making more evil in the world, but she, and this, once is, she gives this her, is her buying her way out of hell. Once she gives her last trinket away, the person who takes that one takes over her position. Then the, then the shop's filled with all of their sins. Maybe, I don't the know. the story starts over. But that could be your end game. It could be, yeah. Buy her way out of this or something like that. Yeah, but what then? I mean, you're a bad person for doing that, so. Sure, but. And maybe it beats whatever languishing hell she's existing in. I don't know. I mean, if we put this in Cleveland, She's stuck on Earth being a salesman. Well, she's an old lady for eternity. So she's had arthritis for like 4,000 years. That's what I'm saying. She's in Cleveland, Ohio. That's hell enough. And if things come back to her, she has to take them back and solve it over again. So like you said, somebody tosses it out the window and it lands at her feet. She's obligated to take it back. I'm just not sure you can just toss any old, you know, any of these items so easily. No returns. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to give something like the ring won't come off your finger, so you have to cut off your finger or something like that to get it off. Or, Damn it. You know. Yeah. Figured out the loophole. Yeah. 
I didn't think anybody'd do that. <laughs> and then it goes back to her, like what who gets the ring once you cut your finger off? No, throw the finger out the window and she comes like fuck. You know. <laughs> so that's the only way she can get it is if you lop a limb off. Maybe maybe, I don't know. And that particular curse object in that story. I mean they're all gonna be different. Uh, I just hate to be the guy who gets the cursed butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to go out on a limb. In my head now, it's porcelain, too. <laughs> I'm going to go it's out all like these on a limb and say, typically, that might not be an item you buy used. Or from a flea market. I'm just saying. I mean. People, mm. please get new ones. <laughs> it's porcelain. I'm sure you can lice all it. <laughs> Don't recycle no. your sex toys. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> God. They're not that expensive. Get a new one. <laughs> Some of them are. Some of them are pricey. I'm I'm still saying get a new one. <laughs> don't get me wrong here. <laughs> it's, it's always a good idea. Yeah. I don't care how expensive Wait, what are they the are. Crystal? Even I mean, if, what are yeah. you looking at? The Even if that's ones, a $200 yeah. dollar drill dough, okay, <laughs> get a new one. <laughs> and this is not where this conversation was supposed to go. <laughs> Okay. Those little old shop lady. Oh, honey, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> it might be worth it. Just oh my god! Scene. You know what? I need that. I need that episode. You know those like 18th century wooden box crank style. You know, like, like it's an egg beater with just yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a yeah, dildo yeah, yeah. end on it. I'm disturbed by this conversation. <laughs> you plug it into a 220 outlet. You know, it's like the it's historical. Die. Like someone <laughs> wants to buy it because it's like it's like this this historical object. It sounds like a helicopter hovering in your living room. <laughs> And she's like, oh, I remember that item. Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, you had to screw something into a light outlet because that's all they had and plug it in that way. Those fuses. All all you guys have, what, like 10 minutes to decide what you want the theme to be. Oh, oh okay. we have four minutes. Uh, Fine, you have four minutes to decide. Is she the devil? Is she selling off her sins? I, I, yeah, Is she yeah I like that selling off sins. I like that. Yeah, so so she herself is cursed. Yeah, and has to, and the only way to get rid of the curse is to sell her sins. So okay, and her sins every single time have wreaked havoc on these people's lives. Oh yeah, they ruined. And in the lives. end, the, whoever takes her last sin becomes the shopkeeper. But I like the idea that they can only be sold to deserving people. I like. See, the I idea don't know if it's a last sin or somebody who did epically bad with it. Well, how does that person come to her? Because I feel like that's how it should end, right? The new the new shop owner. Which would make sense to be the last person you write your short story about. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. Maybe she has to sell the, the spot. So it's kind of like Destiny, the last one you get rid of is the person. I see what you're saying. She sells the shop. Yeah. Oh. Maybe. The, sh the shop is her last sin. Greed. Hmm. Could be. I suppose that works. But then who would ever want that? Who would buy her shop? I mean, if she did well. But she doesn't have any merchandise I don't know. They left. might want to put a restaurant there. It doesn't matter. Or, I don't know. Maybe but she has... No, no, that won't she work probably unless has a normal, it's a building. She probably has a normal inventory along with the sins, you know? Oh, yeah. I, f I feel like she has an actual brick-and-mortar store on top of all the places she goes into these fairs and stuff and sets up a card table. She, yeah, it's in, like, Tremont or something. She's, like, everywhere. Okay, so it's both a store and a flea market sales and stuff like that. Well, a like lot that. of people, yeah, they're closed on Saturday to do flea markets if they do that. Or that you have an employee who does it, you know. Okay, so she's selling her sins, and basically uh, throughout the, the story, it's only deserving people who buy those cursed yeah, trinkets. Yeah, and that's just the overarching story. The cursed trinkets are each an individual story. Right, right. No, we're just trying to plot out the main uh, concept here. Right. So each, each <coughs> trinket is a sin. Like yes. Is there going to be seven books or is or seven stories or is, are we just? Oh, going I think it's much more than that. We can repeat sins. Oh yeah, I I don't, I don't think it's. Oh a no, seven, seven deadly, deadly sins anything. bullshit. No, we, yeah, it's just awful things she did put into trinkets. Okay. So. And they might not even directly represent as the trinket, although it'd be nice to make them kind of suggestive if that works. But you know, whatever. I don't think we're tied into that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think it has to be a precious moment cheating on your wife uh, doll. They wouldn't <laughs> like. They wouldn't know what the sin attached to the item is, obviously, or they wouldn't buy it. You know. Right, right. Yeah, and then it just kind of affects their lives horribly in some way relating to that sin. I think. So now we're gonna have to list a bunch of horrible things that people do, 
and pick what we're going to write stories around that. But we'll do that off air. So okay. somebody make a note of that. All right, so we'll take a break, and we'll come back with the next one. Sounds good. Dear listener, we accept that we had to sacrifice the whole Saturday for your entertainment, but we think you'd be crazy to miss an episode of The Dark and Stormy Nights. The world sees writers as they want to see them, in the simplest terms and the most convenient definitions. But what we found out is that each of us is a brain. And a dreamer. And a creator. And a basket case. A researcher. And a comedian. Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours, The Dark and Stormy Nights. Liz, 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 listen to Dark and Stormy Okay, we are back with the second option, and the second option is? A sequel. Sequel. Now, this rated number two on our, on our list when we, uh, when we put it up for a vote. On our survey? Yeah, on our survey. So, first was horror, so we're going in the right direction. Okay. Um, now, a sequel was always an option for us. We always talked about it from the beginning of writing the original story. Uh, and even in... In doing so, we, we wrote the possibility into the story. Oh, sure. There's a couple of different threads we can go run with. So, uh, you want to, I guess, just jump give into them, it? Yeah, give them the outline. So, uh, see where this goes. Okay. So, um, our story circle, gen- well, okay. My story circle, I know you guys kind of have your own like variations of it. Um, it's just how they name it. I mean, it's, it's all the same thing. It's just whatever words make the most sense in your head. Well, right, and, and, these and they apply differently to different types of stories. Right, right. Um, this is just one that's, that's the simplest for me to understand. So my story circle always starts off with the, the normal, the familiar, um, then goes to their want, what the, what the person wants. Or need. Or needs. Um, and entering into the unfamiliar or a call to action. Right. Um, and then uh, and a- adapting. And then getting what they wanted, followed by paid, uh, paying a price, uh, then returning to the familiar, and then there's usually a having changed at the end. Yes. Um, <clears throat> okay, so for this one, the norm or, you know, their current situation is that the exterminators have all gone their, gone their own way, which is how we ended book one. Um, so, and then the want we had, we were going to basically focus this story on Zara, um, at least to start. And so, in the beginning, we're going to show Zara is working for MI666, which is how we left things at the end of book one. And then her want is going to be that she is still looking for Jennifer, the one who got away. Yes. And her own personal slice of happiness, which kind of took a back seat to everybody else's needs in the first book. Well, when you turn what she's doing from a lifestyle, which is what it was with the crew, right? They lived this life. The, the exterminator service, it was whenever somebody called, you know. I think Which was M- every other minute. Right, and with MI666, this could be a 9-to-5 job, of course, barring major emergencies. Sure, you know? punch a clock, go home to our personal life, oh, shit, I don't have one. Right, you do a little <laughs> investigation, right, you come home to an empty house and some TV dinners, and, you know, it is what it is. So she's living a much more normal life. Well, I think that which it's makes it even scheduled emptier. And yeah, empty, yeah. I agree with that. I mean, I've been there. It's that TV dinner yeah. with tea. Staring yeah. at the TV, but o- only no TVs because so, of the time period. So the, right. qui- the quiet is loud, <laughs> is what we're saying for this. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yes. So maybe she. Well, and and I think she's also occupying her life with the search for Jennifer. Right. I think so she's obsessing, and maybe part of part of the reason that she's obsessing is because of the quiet. Right. It's the uh, detective story of like the unfinished cold case, what? where you know where they're always working in their off hours, even though it has nothing to do with what they're currently doing. You know. You know what though? It's I think that, that people might be like, you know what, man, take it easy. You're, you're, you're overthinking this. Don't, you know, th- don't take the job home with you. And that sounds like a great suggestion until you get home and you realize... And there's nothing else there. You don't know what else to do. I wonder if she got a cat. Uh, well, I think that once she absorbs herself in, in the life chasing Jennifer again, she doesn't have time for that cat. Unless it's a shifter. So, well, uh, is there enough magic for shifters to, to shift? That would be great. What if it is like a regular freaking like alley cat shifter only because magic is gone. It can't shift back. She thinks it's just a cat. 
And really, it's like some guy who's been living with her yeah, <laughs> for it's months. A, it's like a little Mexican guy <laughs> that's been watching her change. God damn it. I was, I was hearing the Antonio Banderas' accent. Ah, uh, damn it. I was going to do it, but I'm sick, so it wouldn't come out right. She is so hot, she has no idea that I can change into a man. Actually, you guys had with talked my about... Us pantherness. You had talked about her letting someone in. What if this is that someone? Uh, I don't know. Don't Do you see it as a violation? Oh, yeah. Not necessarily. That is creepy as have shit. Doesn't to follow her in the bedroom or but, anything. Oh, like it wouldn't. Like okay. I mean, like like you what suddenly start she... taking clothes All off. Right. What's the cat's Liz. gonna look away? It's gonna demure. It would be kind of funny. <laughs> Don't like, oh, project great. your own self on this cat. Am I so cat? ugly? Am I so ugly? My cat looks away when I change. Right. And it turns out he's being chivalrous. Maybe he doesn't have to be in the room when she's changing. Here's my thought. Is she what has a if, creepy little apartment. What I mean, if she, she comes the across government. the cat while she's working a case and he like saves her ass and then follows her home? The cat saves her? Maybe. They have claws. Have you never pissed off a cat before? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but like, I mean, the most it grapples onto the guy's face, pisses in his mouth. All it like, has to do is Well, no, I could tear in his face in the runoff. Frick? Why is that where your head goes? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong with I mean, me. a house cat's not going to do battle, but it can definitely claw up someone's face and it run away. It can distract someone long enough to save somebody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, the so he really goes puss in boots on the guy. So pa- and then Pedro the house cat. And Why is he Pedro? I don't know, because he's Mexican. Why is he Mexican? In England. How does that happen? He's more likely to be Spanish. Spain's right there. Mm. <laughs> but Zara's from Spain. She is from Spain. Oh, this, there this, you go. This is true. It's destiny. <laughs> All right. It's just written in the stars. We, we got out of the, the story <laughs> circle here. Okay. Back to it. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> Not in a good way. Um. Okay, so they enter the unfamiliar. So the situation is that magic is all but forgotten because they sealed it off. Uh, or they put up a veil. Um, so Talbot is... It's more like a beaded curtain, but... <laughs> okay. Um, Talbot's fighting the church. He wants to know why they aren't acting. Where's the Inquisition? You know, all this stuff just went down. But the church is hesitant to do that because right now things are quiet. Uh, because there's the veil over magic. Um, (coughs) But Talbot has a small extremist following, and right now they're talking about taking things into their own hands. Um, Zara finds Jennifer, but she doesn't have the upper hand with her, and you had suggested the idea that it looks like she's going to bring her in, and then something goes wrong. (coughs) So then the next section would be adapt. So... Zara realizes that she's in over her head, and she goes to ask her old team for help when things go wrong. Um, She gets what she wanted. Eventually, the team will take down Talbot and Jennifer, um, but they'll pay a price. Desmond's going to end up getting away after discovering that he can siphon fey energy and magic, uh, which will make him more dangerous than ever, and then they'll also lose one of the books. We're thinking maybe to Jennifer's coven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's time for (coughs) Jennifer to... uh get even more dangerous i think yeah mm. well um, because uh, look we, we talked about jennifer maybe maybe going to jail at the end of this no we talked about killing jennifer yeah i do think she but even if she dies her coven can get the book and there are possibilities when both these books are in the wrong hands. right yeah two or three of those books can do some insane things together so right, right. Yeah, when you start combining them, the magic gets more intense. I mean, you right. got the one that's basically like herbalism, one point summoning, and the, the other one straight up spellcasting. And so the concept is that dead things don't always stay dead. Right. Well, especially when you can once again traverse the veils. So. Right. Okay, and with magic turned back on by this point. That's my point. Um, okay, so they refer to, they return to the familiar, where they agree to see each other more, and then return to their lives Um, and it's even more so right so if magic's back on the veils are open you know things can pass back and forth right it's it's the normal of the first book you know right yeah and with with magic back on there's more there's more jobs that they might need to collaborate on right Um, although honestly i think that turning magic back on might actually cause a certain uh, balance to reassort itself so it actually might be less dangerous because things can go back home. Right. Well, that's what I was saying is yeah, that there are things trapped here. And back and forth, yeah. And that both her original crew and MI666 have been playing damage control with right. creatures trapped here. You know, 
that can't get home. That they, they might not have the match they had, but they might be. I mean, they'll still frantic and causing chaos because they can't get home. There'll still be a need for exterminators, but I don't think it'd be as high of a demand as when things are right. in, endangered. Um, okay, so uh, and then the having changed is that. Um, Czar lets somebody in. And so we didn't really define who that is. I think it's cute to make it the cat, but whatever. I, was I, I, I would like a love interest. I was thinking a partner I was saying the cat could be a love interest eventually. Male, female, other, I don't care, but I want her to have a love interest. And I do want her to take up leadership. I want her to, ch- to start asserting herself. Yeah. She lets somebody in, realizes that she needs people in her life, and has evolved to a leader. She finds her Evolved diva. as a leader. She what? She finds her diva. Although she you, gets her groove back. I, yes. y- you know what, though? <laughs> I, I've seen it many times. I've experienced it. I've seen it in Friends. When people start actually having a Being relationship... Being their best them. Oh. That, yeah, yes. <laughs> when, when they have a relationship that isn't constantly giving them grief, that they don't have to manage, that they're just happy in, you know, it's kind of effortless. A mature relationship? Yeah. They usually have the confidence to be more who they are. You know, yeah. so without that might allow her to get out of her own way to become the leader she was meant to be. I'm every woman. Really, not where I'm going with this, but yeah. yes, okay. sure. Sorry, um, but I am. I, I'm just saying, you know, with uh, the, with the death of Jennifer and maybe her coming to um, to find some happiness, you know, yeah, I mean, she could she could be a be little bit more dark comfortable. To have them kill her though, like comfortable directly. in her own skin. Is it for Meredith? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, she got her man back. I realized that that she took him from her. I uh, don't, don't. I think Zara gets the kill on this. Uh, as we, much as Meredith deserves it. Yeah, I, I thought think about Zara, Zara could it. have a noisy cricket kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, see, Zara's pissed because she was there when I it went that. down. Yeah, and there's a it lot wasn't of guilt. Her husband. I know, the but thing th- is, there's a lot when of we guilt. Plotted was her this, mentor, a father when we figure, plotted almost. this at the beginning of book one. It was going to be the wolf and the raven. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. And Jennifer thought that it was Robert that she had to watch out for, and she didn't realize that it was Meredith that was the wolf. Right. And Robert was the raven. No, that's true. She's a deadly woman and could easily kill her. Yeah. yeah I'm not saying that she could. Well, well or if we're going to play that him. out, if we're going to play that out, that means that I think that I Jennifer think is guarding herself against Robert, thinking Robert's going to be the person yes. to kill her as that revenge for his concept. own life. And then, yeah, Meredith comes out of nowhere and just cuts her to ribbons. Right. The idea is that Zara working for MI666, I don't think she kills her. She'd have to take her in. Well, maybe Zara makes it up to yeah, Meredith I, I think we have by a whole setting her up and bringing her into a scenario where Meredith can can handle No, her. I think it's different than that. No, I think that, that, that Zara takes her job very seriously. I think she would try to take her in and, you know, try and talk to Meredith as, look, this as much as this pains either of us, I've got to take him in. And then after a heartfelt conversation, she's like, all right, I need to do something. Really? I'm going to leave her with you. You want Meredith to betray her? Oh, you think Zara leaves her with Meredith knowing what would happen? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was seeing Zara set, a, set it up for Meredith, yeah. Got to take this call kind of thing? Yeah, something, yeah. Um, You could go that route. We also talked about the fact that uh, Jennifer is going to be much more ruthless and powerful yeah. than she was before. And she was pretty damn ruthless before. Um, but I think that we definitely, like, expand on that. Um, yeah, I think I the mean, Coven truly, is much more You darker. can get her Coven involved. And all you have to do is distract Zara. And then she'll never get the chance to take Jennifer in if, if Meredith gets her hand on, hands on her. I mean, what uh, Jennifer before was in a, in a servant's role, obeying the entrance Biting of Desmond. Biding her time. Right. Tr- looking to steal a book, all that stuff. She has actual magic she can cast, just like that. Without the books. Just a word and a snap of her finger, she can do things. Right. She will be dangerous and ruthless and downright murderous in a way that you have not not seen from any of the villains in the first what book. What you could do is, like, in the fight, they finally get the upper hand, and maybe Zara can put some kind of binding on her, magical binding. As MI666, she has to have something maybe. like that. Um, I think she has um I think she has a good portion of things like the Vatican had that Talbot was siphoning off. Right. So my thought is that she binds Jennifer, thinks again that she has the upper hand and doesn't realize that Jennifer can still fight physically. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, think so steampunk men in black. Maybe that over overcom- that overconfidence 
you know, that she's got her now is what is really her downfall. And then Meredith comes in to but take not her just out. That. She's tricky. And, and there, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like when um, um, Desmond is off his chain, you know, he's doing a whirlwind of death and throwing people into walls and crap like that and ripping apart a building. When you see Jennifer the very first time, she's murdering someone with like a shadow T-Rex hand puppet. Okay. I mean, it, 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 she attacks sideways and in weird ways that aren't predictable and might not be bu- as directly bindable. That's the first thing in the timeline, but it's not the first time the reader sees her. And she does have a book at that time. Well, she kind of comes in the story with one, but my, my point is, is that, yeah, she's, she's dangerous in a whole different way. It, it, they, and I think that when she's no longer serving somebody, you're going to see a lot more from her. Oh, I agree. I think she's definitely, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. I'm lost it. Formidable? Not just formidable, but I think that she's like, you know, grown exponentially in her threat level. Oh, yeah. She's amassing power. She's been amassing power the whole time. She never missed a step. Well, she's unfeathered. So everybody else kind of stalled you know the last story ended and and the team kind of broke apart and mi666 kind of lost track of people and lost you know uh desmond and then desmond and talbot t- you know have this rough relationship she's the only one who didn't miss a step right i think that desmond should not be the spotlight in this one it no not at all yeah no, I, th- I felt i felt jennifer's a main villain jennifer and talbot are our two i think talbot's introduced as a villain it's really jennifer who comes out as the quiet real villain you know what i like everyone's looking at talbot we we direct the reader to look at talbot it's not bad but it's really jennifer who's the real threat it comes out of nowhere and truth be told we haven't plotted out what happens with talbot and his extremist group do they go underground plot like biding their time until they can do this inquisition do they try to gather more followers gain power uh both i i think you see murmurs of it about town i think you see like little fights and things happen um but what i was uh, what, I, what i was trying to say is is that uh where desmond actually went after the team several times i i think that the team ends up having intersected into jennifer's plot indirectly she's not she's not even bothering to get vengeance on them she doesn't even give a crap about what the team's up to. I think the only thing she wants from them is the book, right? Oh, well, yeah, she wants the book. She wants the book that they have because they got Talbot's That's book. true. That's true. And she wants Poppy's book, but doesn't know Poppy has it. But the thing is, the books want to be together. So mm. yeah, that does put them on a collision they're course. They're trying to draw each other together. In fact, that's gonna with two books being in w- nearly one hand, you know, or one group's hand, that's gonna draw her to them. Right. Yes, the other way I around. agree that it'll yeah. draw her to them. But regardless, Zara's still looking for her. So, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, though. It's kind of one sided. Yeah, will be easy. Yeah, no, like I Jennifer's see. after the book, not after them. So did you oh, see yeah, her no, after her? Did you see 12 Monkeys? I don't. Yeah. I don't know. With Brad Pitt? So it's this whole story where the guy's sent back in time and he's trying to, you know, stop the 12 Monkeys from releasing a virus, but all along it's kind of like a red herring. The 12 monkeys didn't release the virus. It was some some guy. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's kind of Talbot's crew, right? It feels like that they are the real problem. It right. feels like that they are the big bad. They're the noisy ones. They're out in exactly, the public eye. Yes. They're the ones on street corners and stuff like that calling for the downfall of and the And then you have the Inquisition, and, and that seems like it's the real threat. Right. Yeah. But and, and Jennifer's at operating the shadows, you know, trying to find the other books and everything because that's what she's always wanted. Mm-hmm. You know, and while she has amassed other power and now rules her own coven, you know, more powerful than Desmond's coven ever was, you know. So you think maybe their their cause her coven is causing little magical strikes here and there and they're blaming Talbot's crew? I was, yes. They're not blaming. They're letting them take the blame. But, the, you know, I, w- I, w- I was thinking this as, as Loki was talking about it. No, I meant the, the heroes she would normally blaming move Talbot's crew when it's really her. Surgical and quietly. But with all that going on. Why bother? Right. She can be as bold so as she wants to be. So she's looking for the book. Right, but she, I think that they plan in a way to where it looks like Talbot's men are responsible. Yeah, but you, know you don't saying? even have to put that much like, effort. Yeah, right. They just do something near where a bunch of them are. Yeah. And boom. You Tag know? it with their, with their pamphlets and, you know. Right, yeah, yeah. Leave some of that around or, you know, yeah. 
put their anti uh, non human symbol up or whatever, you know. Yeah, because Jennifer anti-shifter doesn't give a shit whether symbol. or not you're Faye or not. You, it was never a problem for her. No, know? no, I don't think it would be. So, yeah, now that's, I, I don't know, it might be a little difficult to write on my, for, for my part, but I think with enough planning, we can figure I don't know, that's kind of where I saw it going. Yeah, no, I like it. I like that they're And it also lets us have Talbot for the, the third book to where we, where we discounted him all the way through and then he could be a real I villain. think Talbot loses a job. Over, if he I hadn't think already that, lost yeah, it, he I loses think it. That But that might the make ends, him worse. Yeah, no, I think that in the end, Talbot, Talbot is exiled from the church. Yeah, he's excommunicated. And he's now on his own growing his, um, his group of extremists. Yeah, so we have, yeah, and they might call themselves the Inquisition or something like that at that point, you know. Even if the church doesn't latch on to one, we are the Inquisition. Yeah. So, um, okay, is that enough for that one? or? Yeah, I think we're good with that one. All right, great. Then we'll be back in a little bit with the third and final choice. Yep. Our merchandise brings all the boys to the yard. Go see why on our website at thedarkandstormynights.home.blog. Okay, we are back with the third and final choice. And my my vote. <laughs> Though really? we, we will uh, obviously I, you go know to what? whatever, you know, uh, gets the most feedback. So. I guess yeah, uh, we're going in reverse order of my favorites. I do. I, I think the the last one, this one we're about to discuss, is my favorite concept overall. Then I like the idea of the sequel. Then the I mean, horror. I like the idea of a sequel, but I'd like a break. We can come back to a sequel. No, do no, it season I, I three agree. Or That's so. true. We could always come back to it, especially if the the fans like it enough to start. You know, yeah, I think us. I think a sequel will get if done. People eventually. start want advertising with us, maybe buying our merch <laughs> when I put it back up. <laughs> and I, I like the uh, the first one with the uh, horror genre because I, I find that I it wasn't as hard to write as I thought it was. And I don't really like horror generally because I think it's bad writing and it's boring usually, you know, like the movies. But, yeah, I, think but that, I, I find I that think it, it to be a challenge. it varies by who, you know, by the author a right. lot. Like there's a, a, like a big variance in style for horror. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of different types. But my real draw uh, uh, that I don't want to do with the horror is a whole story wrapped up in every chapter. It sounds interesting, but it could be a lot of work or it could be really good. It could be really bad. It could be uh, part ones and twos. I don't know how that's going to go. So, but out of all the premises that I've heard tonight, I'm really loving this third one, right. and I'm tentatively calling it, even though we do not have a title, The Arcane Hunter's Apprentice. And uh, no, but go ahead and tell us what it's about. Eat me. All right, so this one is an urban fantasy <coughs> about a bounty hunter, an older bounty hunter. We were thinking maybe like 40, 45 age range. I'm thinking older, but yeah, around um, there. You know, who has some charmed items, but is is human. Um who um, is taking bounties in a, in a current, you know. Well, are we agreeing that he's like some kind of magic user? He's a sorcerer or something no, like no, that? No, he, no. He's, he's he a human, human who's got with enchanted ma- With magic stuff. With so he can't cast stuff. magic without these enchanted No, items. no, no. He's given he this has, by the magical order. Yeah, he has spells, oh, okay. but they're pre-made spells. All right, all right. So we're saying the magic order employs these people yes. and Correct. supplies them. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, like he's got like, you know... A duster well, that's enchanted, or maybe a a, a six shooter that's him, been right. enchanted. Like, okay, okay. Yeah, he get probably gets some of them, some of the stuff from that organization. But then the we combine. S- we mentioned he also has other connections. Do you like that name? I do like combine better than like it's always like a council or you know whatever. So, yeah, I dig that. All right, so this guy isn't is that what they call the draft in the NFL combine? There's a few things called the combine. I don't even know what it means. Uh, it's just like an organization, like an organization usually, yeah. but I'm not sure, like a gathering or group of hmm. of beings. But okay, so the concept was that he's the bounty con- hunter who takes jobs from the combine for money, and he's morally ambiguous. Um, his want is that he wants the big bounty. He wants that top job with all the money on it that's been sitting there for so long because no one can do it, and he wants it so that he can finally retire. To Hawaii and <laughs> never and never again see a monster. I was thinking some secluded place where he'll never have to deal with people I was going to say it's probably someplace w- that's low magic. Like, he probably wants to go someplace where there's just... He, he doesn't have to deal with these fucking sorcerers anymore. I just think it's away from everybody. Yeah. Like, he doesn't want to deal with humans or magic but users with a nice or demons. Climate. Some place where he's isolated, right? Because he's crabby. 
Um, okay, so uh, enter the unfamiliar. The guy goes after the big bounty and gets in over his head. And Realize, then running from the danger. <laughs> goes running um, and then realizes that he can't do it alone. He's never taken out a partner before. He works alone. He doesn't like people. And then um, commandeers a pizza guy's car. Enter the pizza guy or the Uber driver or whatever it is. See, I think the pizza guy's better because like an Uber driver has to be responsible, has a background check. Yeah, this car passes It's not just muster. that, but Uber, they kind of like track their drivers and stuff right, like that. Right, right, right. Where pizza places don't. So if you're speeding, you have no fucking idea. I, I can't tell you how often I get pizza and the person is obviously stoned. <laughs> and that's what I well, want. Well, then just be I want grateful that you got your pizza because that is some 19-year-old, mildly buzzed kid who is not ready for any of this shit. Right. <laughs> okay. Enter the pizza guy. He adapts. Or, um, I, well, no, no. Uber Eats is still Uber. Yeah. No, it, it had to be a pizza guy, I think. Okay. Um... Uh, so our bounty hunter grudgingly accepts that he has to train this kid as his apprentice, especially since he what just revealed the entire magical world to the kid. Well, yeah, because um, he's shooting out of the car at some like you know giant werewolf or some charging down the street. Well, I don't think cars. he sees it necessarily until the first bullet hits it. Oh, you mean like it's some sort of invisible giant bubble-sized werewolf? You're saying that magical things can't be seen by mundane eyes? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that maybe there's enchantments keeping them from being seen. Or oh. something, you know right, but there's just like cars being tipped on the side I of the like road. I like that idea that magic can happen right in front of humans as long as it's enchanted. Right, and yeah. then yeah, some shit that. happens. And, and then he shoots in it. Or like maybe he's stoned up. enough to see it. <laughs> I like that too. See, that's not good because if he's doing a real psychedelic, he should... Now he's seeing all kinds of things. Yeah, some they, of it's there, some of it's not. You don't want trails right. and driving. That's that's a bit, that's wow. He's that's moving the irresponsibility a little further down. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. Oh man! So takes the kid as his apprentice. Guess what he wanted is they eventually take down the big bounty. Well, I didn't want him to want to take him as a prince, but like there's he's no, something said where he has a nickname. I think he, he takes him as a ward. Takes him on. Now that the kid's been introduced to the world, he's going to be a target. Not just by these monsters, but by the sorcerers. No, I agree. We're going to make him either choose to join up, you know, or die. I think there's just some sort of prophecy or something, though. Because, uh... uh, uh I hate prophecies. But, yeah, but... We we were talking about like there's all these different societies He's like like Tyr was I mean you know what we could do well sort of uh, but Tyr was originally suggesting like like maybe he has a pixie girlfriend that uses him or something or something yeah. and like that's the hunter yeah and what I was saying is is that maybe she says something and then the kid has a nickname and he's like oh crap are you kidding me. Like, he was just looking to ditch the kid, maybe wipe his mind or something. And once again, I think magic things are drawn together. I think that what right. happens, I think that what happens is the combine that he takes his bounty, he gets his bounties from, I think that he gets in trouble for exposing magic to a human. And That's they're like, guess what? He's on, his head yeah, is your on problem. your, yep, yep, on your watch Oh, yeah, now. okay. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. So that makes him a ward. Yeah. yeah. So he, ma he it, they make him responsible for the human, and they say if he dies by magical means... It's your fault. Well, that so makes him responsible for him. Now he can no longer let so the kid out of his sight. Let me get it straight, though. He can, he can die from normal causes, right? <laughs> Not by your hand. Damn. <laughs> so basically, like, grudgingly takes on the kid because he has no choice. Right. So um, yeah, you have your training montage and... You know, teaching the kid and explaining the Basically, world around and all that. No, teaches the kid how not to die because if yeah. he dies, he's on, it's on his. Yeah, it's, it's his just survival. She, he's just giving him like the zombie land tips. You know what I'm saying? And right, yeah. right. Here's a weapon. Maybe use Don't him as die. bait. Like he throws him in the middle of the but lobby. But he needs to protect and then, like, him. <laughs> comes around the other direction to like deal with whatever monster you're dealing okay, with. Okay, what's the plan? <laughs> Shoves him out into the middle. Right. Don't die. <laughs> <laughs> Here, wear <where are> this. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay. So gets what he wanted, uh, takes down the big bounty, pays a price. Did so much damage taking down the big bounty that he now owes the combine, and he's broke. Um, return to the familiar. He has to keep doing bounties at a reduced rate now until he's paid his debt back. He having changed, and 
the changes that he's softened towards the kids somewhat and is maybe capable of not being a grumpy asshole once in a while. Okay. So I see the Combine is having the company store. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they've got all this magic shit that the hunters can take on that will help them do their jobs. So, uh, but it, it's at a cost, you know. Now, y- you can get the really nice, fancy shit and do more cool things and, you know, make You're your job about the, uh, easier. Dr. Midnight or whatever from uh, Constantine where he's like, cause he has all this equipment and stuff and services he can offer them. And right, yeah, there's like all this stuff that the Combine offers, which are all these dick sorcerers who offer you safe haven, vehicles, contacts, and goods that help you hunt these monsters and stuff like that, you know. You don't, it, but the cheaper you can do it for, the more money you can stash away, you know. So a nice enchanted gun, some swords, something like I that. I think there's got to be a discount while you're working directly for them for their discount. interest. No, you're the only no, person. Yeah, who can they're buy making it. their money off of you. I know, I know, but if they if they actually hired you to do a job and then charge you out the wazoo for everything to do the job. Okay, so I used to work at this. Chain, I'd start hunting them. I used to work at this chain restaurant that had like. Uh, merchandise and stuff I don't 14 I, pieces of flair no not that kind of chain restaurant <laughs> you mean more like Cracker Barrel or something like that no oh. I worked at Hooters and we used to have to like buy our own uniforms and stuff like that so you had I had to mean, buy your uniform we did we uh, had to buy our wow. uniforms but being cheap and give people uniforms so, like, it's barely well, any what cloth. Got, what's a good word for a pyramid scheme right you, not forget the word you got a uniform to start with but if you wanted to like or like when the shirt style changed if you wanted a new one you had to buy a new one or you know whatever so like w- if you wanted additional uniforms but it, it was like 50 cents worth of fabric <laughs> Regardless, I'm saying that kind of stuff already happens. Right. No, I get that. I wouldn't say that they don't take advantage. I'm just saying it's like at a certain point, it's like I can't afford to no. do this job for you. No, no, no. Look, <laughs> the, the, the whole idea is, is you can do it with a minimalist arsenal or you can get the really fancy shit, which costs a ton of money. You know, and no, no, I, I'm not make your job that. easier. You know what I'm saying? I think he is a minimalist. But I think he has, you know, a few nice things, some tattoos that help him out and rings. Oh, sure, and, sure. You know, stuff like that. Things he's accumulated over many cases. Right. But there are other hunters, and we may throw this into the story, that have some badass shit. Oh, I and, agree. And then he's the kid's probably like, like, why don't you have that? Yeah, he's probably like lower rungs of like, because he doesn't spend all his money on this. He's right. bro- he was broke to start. Yeah. And he's, he's saving just, for a yeah, certain thing. He wants to retire, so Be he strong. doesn't waste his money on all the extra weapons. Yeah, I mean, his apartment. You know what? I almost like a, a dresden touch to this. Like, he was always kind of rigging things together, and he was broke, and he had a busted-up car. You know, that kind of concept. Oh, you know beetle, what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I think you, you go into his apartment, and it's basically like an easy chair in front of a TV on a crate. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a minimalist. I agree. Yeah. And I don't think he has an apartment. I think he's living in a hotel. Although <laughs> you were talking at the end, like he's going to owe the, the company store or whatever. I think it's actually more like a blood price. Like he went under an unsanctioned person who actually was villainous that nobody knew was villainous, and actually and it had to kill That's somebody. Right. I didn't think about that. That maybe somebody within the combine right. is responsible for the monster. Problem. And he ends up killing him, and they they hold a blood price on him. So now he owes a debt to them that he's got to work off. Yeah, but that's bullshit. If that was the villain, yes. you killed the villain, and now you have a blood price for killing yes. the villain? it is bullshit, but I think it's also interesting. But yeah, sorcerers are pricks. So That's where I saw that going, but it could all be true. I don't know. That's a little, I don't know, unsatisfying, don't you think? He well, that's the why villain, we have several novels. Uncovered corruption, and they're like... That's, that's the Trump administration. I know, but... You expose the Trump administration for being corrupt, and you go to jail for years. Yeah. Ask reality winner. I understand I still can't believe this. that's a name. We're writing fiction. <laughs> <laughs> reality is much less believable. I mean, like our real world. Not, I know. Not reality. Yeah, the, the, your entire <laughs> sentence that was based in reality sounded nothing like it. So... Um. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. I kind of just saw him, like, making a huge mess, taking down this big bad thing. Um, so you're talking about, like, damage control. $12 million dollars to, like, three city blocks, you know, Riggs and Murtock. I need to see you in my office, God yeah, damn it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, or, like... Uh, so there's three different so ways maybe, you can be on everybody, everybody. Maybe in the think. beginning, we have him bust something big, right? And they're like, this is your last fucking warning. One more 
thing, one more piece of public property that you damage, and it's coming out of your paycheck. You know why I think they and care? And that's exactly I what think they it's do. Like, uh, uh, because it uh, exposes uh, them to humans. Well, fantastical beasts. That's what it is. They have a group of sorcerers that has to go out to the location and fix it so that the humans don't lose their shit and, like, you know. Okay, but the thing that bear in mind is this dude is a bounty hunter, a private detective. He is not a cop who reports to a, yeah, duh, a, a, a angry manager. That doesn't mean <laughs> that he has nobody over him. Everybody answers to somebody. Fine, but he could still flip him off. He, he might have to him pay off. him a check later, but and then and there's the bounty on his head. And then sorcerers pop you like a pimple, or yeah, yeah or they put a bounty on you, and other hunters are coming for you. And we have like John that Wick. was the whole point: is that this combine is not someone you want to piss off. But maybe that's the end result of a series, right? Is taking down the Combine. But the Combine seems to uh, border a, a, a relationship If you're going to make the Combine evil, then he shouldn't be working for I'm not saying they're evil. Them. I think they're ambiguous. Then why I, don't take I, them I think they're trying to protect humanity from the messed up Largely, crap. That's yes. the idea. But well, it doesn't mean that they well, don't... I think it's more corrupt. that they're trying to protect themselves from humanity by keeping it a secret. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that. interesting, though. What if what if some of the fantastical creatures, like because we talked about that, one of the the characters is a fairy, a humans, you know, they're human sized and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and she's banging our main character, right? But you know, what if it comes out that some of the, that that really the combines oppressing magical creatures? Oh, know? no doubt. So now, I mean, it might be because some magical creatures are so evil. You want him to go rogue, but but they're co- oppressing all magical creatures, not no, just the I, evil ones. I, I, I think I think he plays fast and loose with the rules, though. You know, I, I think that. Oh like, yeah, I think he looks the other way on certain bounties. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, now a bounty hunter decides is, to take out your fairy friend, you know, and then then what? Well, that's the thing. Well, is are we are fire? we saying that we weren't saying that at first? We were saying if you you did something wrong to get a bounty on your head, they're paying yeah, for your death. Yeah, but there are also Why monsters. are they paying for your death? There's also monsters in the world, so yeah, it, that's it, fine. Yeah, they're paying for. But are they? You, you're saying that they're paying for all fate? No, die? I don't think they're paying for all fate. The dangerous ones who break the. So then, why would somebody secrecy? go after his pixie girlfriend? Well, if she's a danger to the combines authority say or you know what i'm saying so i'm saying that initially it was because they are a threat to exposing the mass the magical world or they are a threat to they're people in general they're, they're leaving dangerous. a body trail but then it becomes a political thing so they start to use the the bounty system mm-hmm. to take out political adversaries people in the magical world that may pose a threat to the combine's rule you know what i'm saying I think it gets a little suspicious when you use a in this to book. Take or are like you saying if we do a series? I don't know. I'm just. I mean, I'm, I'm theorizing what because the, we didn't really clearly define the bad guy, did we? We didn't define the big bad, but why would the bounty put a he- price, a big price, on their own head? What? Why would the 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 whole point in the book was that he wants the big bounty? Right. He's and taking I'm down the big bad to get that money. Right. The com- the money comes from the combine. Why would they put a price so on So who's this big bad? <coughs> That's to be determined. What if it's a political adversary? Uh, you're saying it's a fae. Yeah, it's a fae that... Then that we have to change the outline. Oh, because the the... Because he was supposed to get the bounty but caused yeah, damage. Yeah, uh, no, no, he, that can still happen. It's just not maybe not the big bad. That, D- yeah, that's that, what I'm thinking. The fight with the big so bad. So you're saying he kills it. somebody who's not a bad guy? No, I, I'm saying it's like okay, he, he, uh, they tell him that what he needs to do is one thing, and when he's halfway through and solving it, he goes, "Oh, this is what's this really going down." And when so he you're tries to close he never out the even case, does it? He never finishes. Well, the case. he might like solve this and protect these people but he refuses to kill this. You guys love taking this. a simple concept and making it murky. Well, I mean, otherwise we can better define the bad guy, but Well, I don't know. I mean, it's like uh, Altered Carbon when he finds out you know, who really killed the, the I mean, guy. maybe that is a political adversary that really does need to go down. Maybe it's just you know, the werewolves decide that, that the Combine needs to go down. I'm not, and uh, the I'm not against the Combine being, you know, not a clear good. Well, I think they're morally ambiguous. But I'm just saying that... I think the world's better off for having them, but there's... To have him working for the bad guy... They're corrupt as an entity. Pulls your... It it pulls the story circle out of whack. Like I said, what if it is another organization that wishes to seize control? So the Combine is largely... What you could do is have someone hack the Combine's bounty system. I mean, they're, they're magical pieces of paper on a wall. And anybody who can do magic can change that. 
Okay, so fairies themselves? Elves? Somebody. Maybe it's elves. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think of some kind no, of magical I mean, creature that you might can have, have the... one guy in middle-high level status in the Combine who has an agenda that is not what the Combine is about. You know, I mean, it could be... It doesn't have to be the whole Combine is part of this Machiavellian whatever. It could be just one guy and his agenda. You know, I, but who knows? I don't know. I, I, it's, it's, it's so open-ended, we could do anything with it. I, yeah, I, I just think that he thinks he's going after something he's not going after. That's they, what they I'm... mark s- the bad guy as something, and it is something else, you know? Yeah, that's... I mean, whatever you want to do, ultimately, I'm just saying that that is going to change the way that you come at it as far as does he... Does he defeat the bad guy? Does he get the bounty? Is there even any kind of win there? Yeah, I, I think he would, um, in this scenario, if we go with this one I just suggested, I would say that he unravels the plot, and right when he's about to bring down what he thought was the bad guy, he finds out who the real bad guy is and stops him. Okay, well, he wasn't doing it just to stop a bad guy because he doesn't give a fuck about bad guys. He is morally ambiguous. He wants money. In that money. scenario, though? He wants the money. You're no, changing no. his motive. Because I... Okay, even your most neutral person, who, who at least in story, when they're written as a hero, you know, like the spotlight's on them, we're paying attention to them, you know, I think that when they're presented with a real difference between an absolute moral good and an absolute moral bad, we'll choose to defend somebody, we'll choose to do the right thing in that scenario when it's put directly in front of them. And I think this person has think shown themselves to be so vile that he does something about it. He ends it. Look, I, I think there's a compromise to be had here, and I think that, that uh, we might be overthinking all this, but the truth of the matter is that maybe a part of this, this dark organization is within the Combine itself, you know? Uh, but That's fine, but you don't necessarily have to make it to where it's impossible for him to get this bounty. You can make it to where... No, no I think he gets paid. In the process of taking out the big bad and getting his bounty, he finds out that there's a, a puzzle piece missing here, and it links right back to right. the combine. Yeah, and that's fine. And that's just a, and I, a future I, thing to be looked into. But I'm saying this is an organization. It's a group, not just a singular right, you know, I get thing that. to take down. And I think this ends up in a scene like the end of uh, Zombieland, where he's trapped in the middle of a town, shooting it up, trying to kill off these things. You know, it's not one thing. It's many, you know. So, okay. <coughs> so it's not what he bargained for, and then yeah, and that's how he destroys this town, fucking trying to kill all these things. Maybe he has to light it up, you know, take out the gas station and blow them all up. Okay, so, so a big boom. Yes, big big bada boom. Cool. <laughs> Did you get the reference? Yes. <laughs> Fifth element. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Uh, he's too old for this shit. Yes, he's too old for this shit. He is a meat popsicle. <coughs> So, we good? Yeah, I mean, I think that that was the gist of that one. Okay. All right, so... So we just need to figure out which one we're doing. Right. So we will tell our audience about this. You guys vote. Yes. Hopefully, actually, by the time this airs, you'll have already voted, right? Or are we going to take a week Mm. next week and do something else and then come back? Uh, Yeah, I would kind of hope that they would actually listen to this. So I don't know. What will we fill the next episode with? (laughs) We'll talk about that out there. See you next time. Bye.